Hello Leo, welcome to Eco Tarot. This is Kensley the Eco Tarotist, and today we're going to be doing a chakra check-in for you. And I've done some, I've already pre-shuffled, so let's go ahead and get into uh, your reading. And just letting you know every information that I might be spieling in the mid, in the beginning, uh, it's in the box below. Uh, you first got the Badger Spirits, fear, be fearless and be bold which I find very fascinating because I always think of badgers as um, just arr, just really aggressive creatures. <laughs> and so maybe it's, it's telling you to take on what normally is in a, a highly aggressive feature and turn it into more, maybe you're more meek right now. And uh, you need to be a little more fearless and a little more bold in your interactions. Um, you know, have a little more confidence. Maybe that's what I'm taking from that. Uh, then you have, I pulled, actually, accidentally pulled two cards from um, this deck. And it's the Observer and Orphans. And I see the Observer as um, something that's, it, you need to have um, a little bit higher perspective, um, observing from afar as opposed to, you know, not being able to see the forest for the trees. And then um, orphaned, where you feel like you're kind of abandoned um, in, in whether that's a relationship or whether that's society, friendship. To me, sometimes um, I'm feeling like you might not feel like you're you were belonging um or you're not fitting in somewhere but what i think there's a difference in finding your 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 people who um who you belong to instead of who you fit in with there's a difference between belonging and fitting in and and maybe that's this is a good thing that you don't necessarily feel like you've fit in with a certain group, you feel orphaned from them. And, um, and so maybe you need to find a group that you actually truly can be yourself in. So first off, let's just start from the bottom and go from the root chakra. You get the, uh, six of wands from behind and the Fox. So, <laughs> I kind of, I really am starting to like the uh, Lenormand deck. It's very uh, cut and dry, straightforward, and I appreciate that very much. But I didn't have one, and I didn't want to use playing cards, so I kind of just drew one up last week. And so you get my <laughs> very serious uh, fox. <laughs> this is my artwork, guys. It's amateur hour. I totally understand, but let me just... Um, use it until I find a, new, a deck that I like. I have not found one I liked. Um, not, not all of the, the depictions are amateur are, but the fox and the bear certainly are. Anyways, um, six of wands from behind is, and this is your root chakra. Let's talk about root chakra for real quick. Um, when in balance, you have their stability, you're grounded, there's prosperity, you're healthy, um, there's trust. When you're deficient in the root chakra, there you're fearful, underweight, spacey. Um, when you're when there's an ex excess of root chakra, there's tends to be obesity, greed, materialism, and hoarding. Um, so. To me, I feel that, and I love this, that you've got the fox, two foxes now. Um, one legit, one hot mess, but whatever. Uh, in Lenormand, foxes uh, sometimes mean selfishness, trickery, suspicion, caution, cunningness, but it also means self-care. And I feel like the fox is really um, misrepresented in that. It, it's self-care. It's looking out for yourself. And maybe that's what this card is also saying is kind of take a step back and having a little bit more perspective of a situation um, to 
be bold and fearless in in your pursuits and victorious in those in 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 those pursuits but also in your pursuits of self care oh okay yeah it's root it's root chakra okay be bold and fearless in protecting yourself from I think you're the feelings of being orphaned and interesting and being fearful and underweight you you want that stability you want to defend that um and and the this big the victorious from the back side is like you're victorious but at what cost it, there's all everyone's bloody and battered and it's looking from the other side this is the the typical when it's all sunny and sunsetty sunsetty um and you don't see any of the people behind you and then you see and from the back side you see what destruction that they left and why it's victorious and that there's a lot there was a lot of bloodshed so there was a lot of pain involved in getting to you get, getting you this far um and maybe that was uh you know you're you've got you've had a long road to to go and in defending your stability and and groundedness and that self-care associated with it. Your sacral uh, chakra is um, clarified by the, why can't I pick this up? <laughs> High Priestess from behind and the Clover. See, it's not too, I mean, it's amateur hour, but it's not horrendous. I can draw 3D, maybe. Just kidding. Um, so what I think of this card, so when you are dealing with the sacral chakra, the to be in balance, it's healthy sexuality, it's pleasure, feeling, fluidity, it's um, creativity, desire. Um, when you are deficient in the sacral chakra there's you're emotionally numb there's rigidity and then it when there's an excess there's you're overly emotional there might be sexual addiction um obsessive attachments kind of stuff and so those that kind of highlights the bell curve of what the sacral chakra represents and you get the you know, high priestess from behind and the clover. The clover in the Lenormand deck means small happinesses. Luck. And then you get this high priestess from behind. And I love this card. This is my one of my favorite cards of this deck. Because it's like, oh, she's a badass. There's some secrets behind here. You ain't getting in unless you prove to me that you are worthy. Clearly you are. And she shows you what, what, what secrets are behind the purple curtain. And it involves alchemy. It involves, um, you know, both lead and gold keys. You see that? Um, kind of representing that you need both to you need a balance you need that yeah yeah that yin and yang balance to uh be successful um no, normally when you think of alchemy you, you think of turning lead into gold um but you can't have gold without the lead so and you have can't have i guess you can have lead without the gold but the, the point the whole point is is that there's balance there. Like you need the be you need the the lead, the the darker side of things, in order to achieve the light. Um, and then you've got the blue and the red flames and this whirlpool of knowing. I don't know. It's kind of cool. But in in the in the context of sacral 
um, in terms of sexual health and creativity and desire, you are, this is a, this is auspicious. This is not only are you, the, you're, you know, are you lucky with the clover, but your sacral chakra is doing pretty well because it's, it's your creativity and your balance and sexual, um, health is, has deemed you worthy to go behind the purple curtain. So I think you're doing pretty, pretty amazing there. You, you're in touch for sure. Um, the solar plexus is an energy of, so it's when you're in balance, you've got your, it's the, it governs the ability to see both inner and outer dimensions. There's vitality, there's strength of will, there's purpose. There's self-esteem and there's um, kind of a concept of being a visionary, um, courageousness. So think of I think of self-esteem when you think of solar plexus. When you are deficient, there's poor self-esteem uh, and you're passive. And then when you're in excess of the sacral chakra, I mean, excuse me, uh, the solar plexus chakra. You are, there's, it's more domineering, um, controlling, aggressive, um, scattered. So you get the, to support this, the solar plexus, you get the, um, ace of pentacles from the forward and the mice from the Lenormand deck. And I take the mice which means stress, anxiety, decay, thievery, destruction, flaws, and disease. Sorry, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> really straightforward. Uh, messages from Lenormand. Um, I think you've got anxiety about a new beginning. I think you've got anxiety about your self-confidence, about um, strength of will and purpose. And this is, I think this is a new beginning in, and I think you're terrified of it. So there's something, there's a new beginning in something real that's in your life. And I think you're, you're terrified it. It's given you anxiety. Um, there's stress involved in your, and it's making you insecure. And you know, again, spirit is saying, oh, that's why, because you've been orphaned. Wow. Okay. You've been orphaned, um, in not the literal sense in the societal sense. I think, I think you've been abandoned by a friend or a lover or a group of friends, um, for not being exactly who they want to be. And frankly, again, I, I do, I feel that it is very hard to break free from what your friends like to, to say and, and do and, and all these things. And you want to fit in sometimes and conform, but it doesn't always, um, lend itself to truth within your soul. And it's hard. It's hard to break free and have a new beginning and something real. And if you notice this, this is something real. Think about this. This is the card that is a new beginning in something real versus the backside, which is a new beginning in something real, um, on the ma material side of things, but you've, you've got the garden side of things to, so to me, that means that, uh, you're, you're leaning towards the more natural side of man-made things. Um, Hopefully more nature, but this, I mean, this garden is still manicured. Let's just be honest here. Why can't I pick up these cards? I just chopped my nails, so maybe that's why. Yeah, I mean, it's more natural. And natural. Natural. Full of nature. <laughs> nature. But it's also still pretty stinking manicured. So, um... 
but I do think in terms of your solar plexus and your, your self esteem, um, I think, I think there's anxiety in, in starting something new outside of, um, what you've been abandoned from. Um, the heart chakra is when you're in balance, you're dealing with compassion and self acceptance and solid relationships um, intuition, vulnerability. Uh, when you're deficient in the heart chakra, you're dealing, you're sh on the shy or lonely side, you're isolated or bitter. Um, when you're in excess of the heart chakra, you, there's codependency, jealousy, possessiveness, poor boundaries, poor boundaries. And So you get the, to, to clarify that the, the heart chakra, you get the, um, three of wands from the backside and the child from the Lenormand deck. And a yes, amateur hour. I know it's a placeholder guys. It's a placeholder. And it was fun for me. Whatever. I enjoyed the art. I mean, yeah, this is, this looks like some scary child out of, um, nightmarish horror movie, but whatever. It's a child. Um, it, it serves its purpose and child in the Lenormand deck literally means child or toddler. Um, it can sometimes mean inexperienced or innocence or new beginnings, but it is truly about innocence and most likely a child in your life. So this is dealing with the heart chakra and, um, you've got the three of wands from the backside, which is this dapper, dapper man, very, I read the description. I was like, really, it's like, oh, it's the, the man who just, has a little bit of gray in his beard, but he's still very virile. He's still got it all to himself. I'm like, whatever. So that he's also balancing water and fire in a yin yang balance experience. Um, and typically a three of wands would mean waiting for that manifestation to come in that the, the planning and, um, the, the plans that you've made the, the, in, in the two of ones are being, um, have, have been manifested and are, you're waiting for that manifestation to happen. And so what I think of the heart chakra in that regard is, um, I think it's balancing your inner child. Um, I think it's balancing the inner child within with this dapper, strong, amazing man or woman that you currently are. Um, and, and having compassion for that inner wounded inner child that probably never really got, um, healed because this is the inner child card. I think of that deck of the wisdom of Oracle deck. It's, um, feeling orphans feeling you have, I mean, the, the, the concept of being an orphan is that you no longer have parents, but what that it totally represents is that you feel abandoned. You feel abandoned by your family. You feel abandoned by your friends or society or, or a person that you loved. And there's a lot of inner child wounding that needs to happen, um, in order to, um, to balance out this awesome person that you are on the outside. There's that balance of fire and water, the emotions. Yeah. You've got all the fire. This is all the fire baby. And look, he's, this is three of wands. He is fire. He's looking at, um, he's got his, his wand that he's holding. He's adjacent to wands. This is all about fire, except he's trying to balance out the fire with the water yet. And there's no water in this picture. The emotions part, 
of it. And that is having to deal with this wounded child, this wounded Chucky looking child <laughs> that I have drawn for you today to scare the living shit out of you. That is my purpose in life. But what it is, and it's observing it, it's making sure that you um, can kind of see that perspective and understand that um, there's a there's a wounded inner child inside of you that hasn't uh, has never been told that it's okay to f feel their emotions. They've never been told that it's okay, or that um, it's okay to you know draw a certain way, or it's okay to do a certain um, sport and not be perfect at it just kick the ball instead of being having the soccer coach be your soccer expert and you're now being forced just kick the fucking ball like it's okay to be a kid oh, man i'm getting really this this whole orphaned thing has really wow i'm going to have to say I'm going to just go on a tangent right here because, um, I really, I've just started homeschooling or the, the distance learning bullshit that we're all having to go through as parents of young children. And if you don't have to deal with that, God bless you. Thank God you don't have to, because it is a living fucking nightmare. And my mom just told me that a school district up near Lubbock, Texas, just literally said, guys, it ain't working. We're doing straight up in-person schooling or good luck. Figure it out. Do your own homeschooling because we ain't going to do this anymore. And I, <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's horrendous. And so the point that I'm trying to make is actually, I kind of forgot it, but um, man, I had a really good point too, is that I feel as if, Oh, that's it, is that we put so much pressure on our children. And now that I'm a parent, I'm realizing what I'm doing to my child to get them to do things and that, that society claims that they need to do and schooling and, and conformity and, and say your manners and all this shit. And it's like I'm watching the breakdown of my child's tiny little wonderful spirit every day that I have to do that. And I, and it almost, it makes me, it terrifies me. It makes me step back and say, what can I do to embrace that tiny spirit of hers to not, to not let, to, to not break her down into the conformity of, of what we've all been broken down into. What can I do to still have her, you know, live within the confines of our society without breaking down um, her little spirit because I don't want her to regret uh, one thing about her childhood and I'm sure she's going to regret a lot. I, it's funny how you, you think, man, I'm, I really am trying to do this to, to ensure she's not going to go to therapy later about certain things and then you realize that she's just going to go to therapy later about other things you just don't even know about. Can't even predict. So, but, but to be conscious and aware of what we do to break a child's spirit down. <sighs> to get them out of balance of their heart chakra. Where they're either shy or isolated, lonely, lonely or better as an adult or codependent or jealous or possessive, or they have really shitty boundaries. It's so hard to get everything in balance and no one's going to do it. I don't, I don't know who has everything in balance, but we're learning and all we can do is check in 
and um, really try to identify with that inner child within and try to give it compassion. The compassion that your parents never gave you. Passion, the compassion that society and your family and your friends never gave you as a child growing up. Throat chakra. When in balance, you speak your truth. You see the... Um, there's clear communication, there's creativity, there's resonance. Out of deficiency, there's uh, fear of speaking or poor rhythm in speaking. And in excess, you have an inability to listen and um, or stuttering or excessive talking. That's the concept of the, the, the balance associated with the throat chakra. You got the Eight of Swords being stuck and the coffin, which is ending and dying or loss, which is literally dying or loss or ending. It's no interpretation of death and rebirth and all this amazingness that is the tarot. It is Lenormand, so we're talking, it's just fucking ending. This is an ending. There ain't no beginning yet. I don't know. There's just something in there. There's, there's something in there that died. Either your pet hamster that you forgot to feed or you, your ego or something died. We're not talking about, there ain't no little Norman that talks about rebirth. We want to say it's going to happen, but the honest to God truth is that's just what the card says. It's something, something's going on with throat chakra. And I choose to believe that it is death of being stuck. Of not being able to speak your truth. That's what I would love to believe that this interpretation is. It could also be you feel hopeless and there's a straight up dead ending in your life and you feel stuck. I'm not going to deny that that's the other interpretation. Like we want, we want, we want the, wait, I mean, I see it like this. I don't know if the camera sees it like this, but I see stuck, death of stuck, being dead. Um, the death of being stuck. Or it could be stuck in death. <laughs> I mean, let's choose to believe that because spirit is saying, you know, be bold and fearless. And speaking your truth is truly having the courage to be fearless sometimes to speak out against, um, what, what you've, you know, against your family that didn't treat you right against your friends who you've thought you felt like you had to fit in instead of belong where they didn't fully accept you. And you feel all cut out and orphaned because you didn't wear the right pink sweater on the right day of the week. What is that chick from um, Mean Girls? Mm hmm. That's that shit. You didn't wear the pink sweater on the right day of the week. You're not longer a part of our group. I fucking hate that shit. Excuse my French, but I was band nerd, and we don't we don't tolerate that. We are a group of belonging of all nerds. So that's only what you're gonna get out of this channel is the belonging of all the nerd, whether you are within, without, outside of yourself, you are a nerd, or just secretly within. We don't care. But I definitely see, I see a breakthrough, an ending of being stuck. And what I love about this card is that she's stuck in her mind. The swords is intellect and mind. Um, she's, feels like she cannot move, that she's, she's imprisoned. But 
if you had gotten this other card, maybe, and maybe that's it. If you had gotten this other card, it would have meant that you have the ca capability of, of being free because um, you've missed realized that those ropes are fully not tied tightly and that you have an actual sword behind you that can help you use your own intellect and your mind to help you. But I mean, we're looking at the front part of the card where you still feel stuck yet it is clarified by an ending card straight up ending and so i do feel like your throat chakra is you're going to be able to speak your truth either you have spoken your truth or you're going to be able to speak your truth very soon um third eye is when in balance you are seeing seeing the future there's psychic perception there's um, accurate interpretation, imagination, clear seeing, intuition. When you're deficient in the third eye, that's poor memory, poor vision, you're unimaginative or in denial. And when there's an excess in the third eye, you've got headaches, nightmares, delusions, difficulty, concentrating. So you've got what is the known as the um hanged man in from the back side and then in my little tiny um lenormand deck that i've created it is the rider which is typically a man on a horse but with me i like to only have animals when for whenever possible um and so it's a bird on an elephant riding on an elephant. Um, rider. So I'll explain this in a second. Uh, rider means um, messages, speed, welcoming. Um, it's generally positive and it means soon. Um, and this hanged man is on the backside. It's not the forward. It's the back. And... I love it that it means that it's not that you need to have um, clarity in letting go of your ego or contemplation. It is, there's already, the ego has let go. There is no more ego. And so not only are you free in your third eye to have that deepest intuition but you're able to teach others and these these two individuals are actually found in the hierophant card um they were trying it's it's all about uh, breaking free from the dogmatic pressures of religion and then they sh in the hierophant card they're t they're trying to learn the 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 uh religion um and then in he in this card they're they're breaking free of the dogmatic um co confines of religion you see the um hierophant's uh mask broken down here with a scythe which means cutting of Really, and then there's a cutting of, of old beliefs, and then there's a snake that was on the, the Hierophant's um, staff. And I love this. So I, I love this that it's part of the third eye. I love that it's, um, this is actual, this is absolute knowing. This is not just absolute knowing. This is a healer. This is someone who is teaching others at this point. And it's coming in fast and 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 this and if you don't know it already this is it's coming in fast for you um and your third into your third eye so i don't i don't know i feel like you are doing amazing healing work that um vision visionary that imagination that um seeing seeing clearly it's and you're seeing what what all of this is that you're oh 
that you're no longer 3D with your people who orphaned you. That you're moving forward and understanding the truth outside of dogmatic structures. That you're now teaching others, these two people behind you, that it's coming, um, that this, this message is coming to you fast. Um, and wow, I think let's move forward into the crown and the crown within balance is self-realization, contentment, oneness, wholeness, wisdom, knowledge, spiritual connection, and consciousness. Uh, when you're deficient in your crown, you, there's limited beliefs and apathy. Um, when you, there's an excess in the, in the crown chakra, you, there's um, your overly intellectual confusion, spiritual um, addiction, spiritual addiction, um, or disassociation. And you get the King of Wands and the Tower from the Lenormand deck, which the Tower means authority or ego, loneliness, solitude, or arrogance. And it's neutral. This is a neutral card, so it doesn't necessarily mean negative. Uh, and so I take this as authority. I think you're taking authority over your... Um, self-realization and your consciousness and awareness of all of what go has gone down and you've oh you've gotten victory over this now i don't take this now as victory and self in self-care i think this is victory over selfishness and trickery and 3d bullshit Suspicion, caution, cunning. You are victorious and you've won a long ass, bloody ass battle against figuring out this cunning, selfish, trickery, suspicion, um, and against these people who weren't really nice to you. Whether it was, again, your family, a group of friends, a friend, a person, a person that you loved. Um, you are grounded in the fact that you have gotten victory over, over that um, negative, suspicious, and selfishness. Just there's an unease there from being not just from being orphaned, but from the people who orphaned you, I think. And that's how you did it was that you, you gained perspective and then you're, you know, you've gotten this uh, back curtain VIP experience in spirituality. You're, <laughs> you've gotten this lucky experience to check out the VIP room behind the, the, the high priestess in your sacral chakra you are but you're nervous about confidence in a new beginning um in your solar plexus chakra uh you're wounded with you've got you've got some wounding to to contend with with your heart uh your your inner child and your heart chakra um but the balance is there it, the balance is I think apparent because you're ending the part of you that couldn't speak for yourself, the the part of you that couldn't um, speak with conviction on your beliefs, on what on what you love versus what these people had had wanted or thought of or whatever. And, and you're seeing clearly now with, um, insight and not just insight, but teaching others, teaching others. And then, um, I think your con, your level of consciousness is going, getting to King status in a tower of authority. Um, 
and not in a bad way. It, I think, I think I take this tower as ascension and you are this controlled, passionate person who knows what they want and goes after it and in confidence, you know, <laughs> It's a hard thing when a solar, when your solar plexus is insecure in a new beginning and yet your crown knows it to be confident. And I feel like that's a juxtaposition. Some, some chakras are in alignment. Some are blown out. Some are, are, but overall, I think this is a beautiful, beautiful reading and Leo, I just, Continue to be fearless and being bold and, and understanding who you are and not being afraid to uh, speak your truth and to teach others about that truth and being a healer in, um, in what you've learned and um, understanding that things like this where you're orphaned um, from people who are kind of shitty always a gift always a gift when you reflect and realize what you went through and what you're looking for now just please continue to do that to reflect it's it's a detriment when you don't reflect it's it is not a good thing when you don't reflect because you won't see what what a gift it is and you will just think that your life is shitty when in fact it is absolutely an amazing ass life. Leo, I love you. Hope you have a great week.